Hello and welcome to the African Community Forum. On today's show, we will discuss some of the hot topics within the African diaspora community in our region. Joining me in the studio are Mr. Hermias Mangese, who is the co-chair of the uh, Montgomery County African Affairs Advisory Group, Ms. Anita Washington, who is a, who's a host of the Anita Live show on Fairfax, Miss Matilda Banga, who is a pastor and a TV personality also, Correct. and also Mr. Chris Overby, who is a Washington DC resident, who has joined us to discuss African issues, community issues. <laughs> you guys look too serious. Let's have a little that's bit right, of fun. That's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Babe, that's a little bit better. <laughs> All right. So, what are some of the issues that we probably should discuss? Right now, it's a, a hot topic. We're already starting to see a lot of campaigning. Mm -hmm. Is this vote that's coming up in 2020? Campaigning. General elections. <laughs> 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 Let's discuss the general elections. Chris. I mean, there's a lot of issues that are going to be coming up. I guess the first, I guess the, I guess the big issue in every mind is, you know, who's going to be president, you know, mm -hmm. after the 2020 election, you know. Will Donald Trump win again? I'll be honest, I didn't believe he would be elected the first time. Mm. The longer his presidency goes on, the more I believe he'll get elected again. Sad to say, I mean, I don't yeah. really know how to go, but I think he does have a chance to get elected again. Mm -hmm. But I'd see it'd be interesting if maybe Governor Hogan decides to step into the race and to see if there will be any other Republicans that choose to step up and, uh, and challenge uh, yeah. President oh, Trump. Now, um, let's get a little bit of a religious <laughs> perspective. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, not. <laughs> maybe not, but Why I would like that? to say from the perspective of an African diaspora, mm -hmm. I would love to see more participation from our community. Okay. Because mm -hmm. what has been happening is we're having a lot of talk, mm -hmm. meetings, and all of that. But when it comes to really standing up and, and giving our voice mm -hmm. to the things that are important to us, we our turnout is very low. So for me, as, as a pastor, as a, somebody who has a constituent already, mm -hmm. my thing would be, get the Africans out to vote for the issues that are important to us. Mm -hmm. So that when we put the right people from local to presidential, when we put the right people in, then mm -hmm. we can say that person represents our voice. And okay. that means mm -hmm. having Africans in the seat mm -hmm. making decisions. Okay, so African advisory group, I think that would be your role. Well, my role is... Or the role of your institution. Uh, well, the role of my institution is to advise the county mm -hmm. government, the county executive, okay. on issues that are very much pressing and crucial to an African community in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. So this is the ambit of our role. So we don't, you know, we don't care per se to things happening outside the bound of Montgomery County since okay. we are bounded by the you know county border okay. so we advise to be uh, the county government to be more informed about the issues that are affecting African Africans. born mm -hmm. immigrants working and residing in Montgomery County okay mm -hmm. but is it fair to say that the local politics are actually what feed into yes. the um, general politics well it does mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, like uh, my sister Matilda just mentioned, African community, the mindsets of our community, you know, predominantly that we are here just, you know, to live probably a good life, you know, <laughs> quote unquote, uh, disregarding what is going on around us. Mm -hmm. So the fact that many Africans, immigrants, who are American citizens, they don't, you know, mostly, they're not concerned about the, you know, the politics mm -hmm. of the local community. Lo the local community. Mm -hmm. But whereas most people are concerned what is going on in Africa, or they are consumed by, by the facts mm -hmm. and things that are happening across the Atlantic, mm -hmm. 
so because of that, we are losing ground in here. We're not, we're not counted to the community because to be counted, to be seen in your community, you have to go out and vote. So you have to be registered. Somebody has to see you as a, you know, as a, a valid uh, constituent right. so that they will come next time to you. When you go there, they would listen to you because you can punish them with your voice, I mean, with your votes. Okay. Now, I, Anita, mm -hmm. um, what, in your opinion, would change the mindset of our community in regards to voting or, well, or engagement in politics? I think what hurts us the most mm -hmm. is the fractioning that we do okay. and where we divide ourselves based on African-born mm -hmm. and descendants of slaves. Okay. What is the definition of the diaspora? Are the descendants of slaves included? Mm -hmm. Are we not? When we put definitions, we put issues on the table, right. are there issues that affect us all as minorities in the United States? Mm -hmm. Or are there specific issues that are just to immigrants right. versus native born versus um, whatever else is under the umbrella? Right. Well, one, one, of, one of the great initiatives that the African Union currently has in place is actually engaging the African diaspora as a whole. So basically all descendants of Africa as a whole, right? And in order to do that, mm -hmm. it will take a lot of um, mind changing because I mean, we have to remember that in order to control our community, sometimes tactics of division and separation had been applied. So how can we work on making some of these go away, Chris? Can we bridge the gap? Right. I mean, I think it all starts with a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of, and I guess the big thing is to talk and determine what our issues are, you know, what, are the, what is the common ground that we can stand upon and move forward, you know, I think that'd be the big thing to do. Okay. Yeah, to switch our similarities uh, yeah. versus exactly. our differences. Exactly. Just to add to that, mm -hmm. one of the things that we've been addressing is for um, us Africans to understand and to realize the importance of the black uh, African Americans mm -hmm. in the role of even our lives or the, con or the right. country as a whole. Right. Because we are able to be here today mm -hmm. as Africans because some African Americans were able to dedicate their time and everything for us. But I hold right. my thought. Okay. If you want. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Matilda. Okay. We, got, we, we definitely on hot topics and you just joined us. This is the African Community <laughs> Forum and we'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned. The African diaspora, which is very diverse here, you know, as you mentioned, we have the uh, African immigrant community of the Caribbean, and uh, we have uh, Afro-Latinas and Latinos, and we also have uh, African Americans, obviously. And I think, look, society views, when, when I walk up, when you walk up, when anyone walks up, they see a black person. And that bears out in statistics, whether it's health or education or interactions with police. Um, we share so many common issues. Um, and so I, my focus of kind of being, as being a Nigerian American has been, how do we come together, work on those common issues, whether it be access to quality health care or access to education or uh, community policing in our neighborhoods and we're stronger together, bring our voices together. There are cultural uh, differences, of course, but uh, we're all connected. And, and so that's what AIC is trying to do is to build our organization and strength and work in partnership with the African American community. Uh, and I think you, this was a good step towards. You saw you had a, a mixed crowd here today, and I think that's a good thing. We're gonna need to do more of that, but there's so many things in common. The disparities are bear out. They, don't, uh, they aren't distinguishable between the a diaspora and the African American community. We come here, we're all Americans, we're all residents, and we need to work together. The communities of color have all experienced some of the vestiges of systemic racism and systemic uh, policies that have kept us behind and underemployed, underhoused, and segregated. And so we have a lot of good starting points um, to, to come from. And, and so, it, again, it's, it's housing issues, uh, job, education. Uh, all those opportunities have a, a tremendously uh, profound impact on communities of color because of where we've come from. Uh, but more importantly, we've got, we've got a kinship. And we've got, we've got a lot of uh, things in common in terms of our common ancestry and our struggle. So it's an opportunity for us to come together and, and move forward. 
we need to create time and space to have dialogue so that we can better hear from the community regarding their concerns, but also the opportunities that lie before us. It also is an opportunity to build trust and to build camaraderie and to build relationships. And it's those relationships that really have a deep impact on our ability to make policy, because when we hear from our community and we talk to our community, we make better policymakers. I think it's important that um, the black diaspora really come together around a set of issues. I think education for immigrant communities in general is a, is a major issue and something that we absolutely um, need to and should come together around. Um, we see that the outcomes for um, black students, there's um, the achievement gap that we've been working on for years and years. And I think um, a top priority for any immigrant family is to have a strong education, that being a key to opportunity um, for, for students. And I know that was something in my life that I think has really helped me to get to the place that I am now. So I think um, education issues, um, especially with the state dealing with a huge overhaul of our education system, a huge over overhaul of our funding, huge overhaul of our policies around education that's taking place right now is a place where we definitely need the African immigrant and Caribbean immigrant communities at the table advocating and being a voice on that issue. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. And if you have just joined us, you're watching the African Community Forum. We touch on a lot of hot buttons. But um, my guests here, they're expert on these matters, and they definitely love it. So, Let's now talk about the region, its diversity, okay? The Washington metropolitan area is one of the most diverse areas in the country, okay? In your opinion, does it really embrace diversity? I think in the current climate, mm -hmm. the diversity that is being embraced in the area is based on the color green mm -hmm. because there were 20,000 African Americans, however we slice them, that were moved out of D.C. proper because of the gentrification. Mm -hmm. So when you, <laughs> when you look at the diversity that is currently happening in the area, it is based on economics. Right. So is it embraced? It's embraced if you come with the economic stability See, you, you've hit a hot button issue for me right there, right? Because personally, I see myself as a gentrifier. Mm -hmm. All right, and I, I was born in D.C., you know. Okay. Uh, even I lived in D.C. for a few years, but you know, I was raised in uh, Woodbridge, Virginia, in the suburbs, you know. Okay. But when I bought my first house, I bought it in Anacostia. Personally, I saw it as th it's an up and coming neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, I got in for 100000 uh, Last month, my neighbor sold her house for 500000 right? Mm -hmm. So I was looking. So you know, I mean, to say gentrification is, okay, well, what have the people that have been in that neighborhood done in that amount of time to really, you know, to make investments in the community? And I understand that there have been hardships in the community that have caused them not to be able to make those investments. Okay. But at the same time, you know, you have immigrants that come over and they'll pull their money together and buy a house, and that could have been done in these neighborhoods. And to see people, you know, to see Barry Farms, you know, saying a dwelling, like a historic, a historic dwelling in D.C., a historic mm -hmm. neighborhood, we'll say in D.C., mm -hmm. and to see that, you know, saying come, it, come collapsing down at this point, but to see what's going to be there in its place, to see, you know, saying more families able to get in, and to see some retail, and just to see, you know, investment in the community, isn't mm -hmm. it worth it? I mean, it's sad to see some people get to, get displaced, but at the same time, things have to change eventually, right? Well, I think 20,000 is a little bit more than some people getting displaced, and yeah. two, when we look at how, for us, slavery has affected our generations mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. mindset that doesn't change. So mm -hmm. when the mindset doesn't change and the system doesn't force the mindset to change before pushing the body out, then you're not really changing anything. You're just dispersing poverty mm -hmm. and it's bound to come back. Right. Now from the perspective of um, African immigrants also, of course once they get in these environments I'm sure that they either be become a changing factor or join the mindset. What is your experience as um, community leaders? Well, uh, I am I'm grateful that uh, we came in this country in 
in a, a better time. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. old bad days are now faded out of memory, you know. Mm -hmm. And we live relatively, you know, not the life that our predecessor have lived. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a fortunate, not, you know, I would say it is fortunate for us, but, you know, s some people have sacrificed a great amount of uh, you know, their life mm -hmm. for us to, to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other flip of the coin, what I believe is we do not have to live in a, cons in a continuous and consistent accuser, I mean, accusing life. So we have to, at some point, also understand the past is past, but we have to strive you know, to make our future uh, brighter. Mm -hmm. no, uh, I know that the, the past is really you know, shouldering on mm -hmm. us. It's not easy, but still we have to come out of it, emerge, uh, we have to emerge triumphantly. Mm -hmm. But well, not easy as a theory. And, and that takes us into a topic of forgiveness. So a, as a mm -hmm. pastor, how involved is the church in this diversity and in this engagement, in this act of forgiveness? Well, I think forgiveness as a topic is, is going to be a continuous mm -hmm. uh, topic. It's something that we start from home, mm -hmm. from our families. It's left to us. Do we want to just imbibe what happened years ago to our children? Or are we looking at the brighter future for tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, our, in my personal opinion as an African immigrant, um, I would say that we came here because there was opportunity. Mm -hmm. There is opportunity for change. There is opportunity for improvement. And that's what the African uh, community is looking at. Mm -hmm. So we come here with nothing, with one suitcase. Like I did, mm -hmm. I came to study, and I was unable to go back because there was war in my country. Okay. But I'm able to buy a house. I'm mm -hmm. able to start a business. Mm -hmm. I'm able to, to put one foot on top of the other and build my own community mm -hmm. or, or you know my dynasty if i want to put it that way right. not to negate mm -hmm. what has happened okay. but we build on a brighter side again okay. not speaking as a pastor right. but just looking at opportunities as a, as a person <laughs> right so now now that being the case though why is it race such a hot topic such a hot button to discuss why is it so difficult to discuss race well the i should start the best question i mean i can phrase this question in another way. Why not rest? Because rest is everything for this country, even it's for evident. the world. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll this yeah. country has been built on the racism that mm -hmm. existed for 100 years, 100 of years, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only in this country, but the imperial America. I should say that word. Nobody knows America as imperialist. The imperial America has built its wealth and its system on the shoulder of blacks and other brown people in the world. Mm -hmm. So now we are here. The system has been built through racism. Okay. So that's why we're talking about racism today. Okay. So it, it, it has, you know, it's been here for longer and a longer time and it still exists. Right, yes. but with, 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 with taken into an account, it, we've taken into account forgiveness, the land of opportunity, what can we do as a community in order to make that the Honeywell the best place to be in? The best place to be in, I would say, is we're going nowhere. Okay. Colored, whatever. We <laughs> it's like we yeah. have to have tolerance. Okay. Because tolerance. we are going nowhere. Yeah. So there has to be a lot of awareness raising mm -hmm. in the in the minds of blacks, colored, white, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Because we have to understand this is where we are. We're going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So until we begin to understand what tolerance is okay. and um, see that when you go to the hospital, mm -hmm. there may be a black doctor, there may be a white doctor. Okay. We have to have trust, no. which no. is broken many, many bridges. Go ahead. Right. Now, we, we have to take another <laughs> quick break, so <laughs> we'll be right back with the African Community Forum. Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. 
Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? And we are back. The African Community Forum is hot today. Very hot. <laughs> so we, we left the conversation when we were talking about racism and how to solve the problem of racism or how to be able to discuss and resolve the problem of racism. We touched on forgiveness. We touched on um, tolerance, the ability to have that conversation. But as people, I guess, should this conversation happen in isolated communities first and then with all of us as a whole, or should basically just be a general conversation where all communities should join in? Well, for me, mm -hmm. I can, I'm, I'm a post-civil rights child of the South, Okay. right? Okay, so I'm used to two things being the foundation mm -hmm. in the community, Okay. church and education. Mm -hmm. If you educate people when you use the public school system to do it, that creates a natural flow of awareness. Right. Yes. Education. Same, same thing with church. Sure. Yeah. All right. So now, what topics should we then bring up or discuss in our community? What topics do you guys think that we should discuss in the community in order to better the community? And when I'm talking the community, not the diaspora community at this point, just the community as a whole. Well, I think we need to stop being uh, reactive to the news. Okay. Because now the agenda is being set by someone else out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now in a point where we got numbified. We don't feel, you know, sympathy to what is going on around us. Mm -hmm. We just talk about it. When we see things happen, you know, on the news, then it vanish from our memory right mm -hmm. away because the next headline is waiting for us. Mm -hmm. So the breaking news comes and our discussions change. We are mm -hmm. reactive and we need to start to be proactive and set our agenda, mm -hmm. our own agenda that emanates from our own perspective, our own way of life. Mm -hmm. It's only then and then that we would start to see the changes what we aspire to see in our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, as a member of the media, I need to, do you feel that you play a major role in probably changing the way news are passed on into l listeners or viewers or to the communities? A major role? Mm -hmm. no. no. Because the media used to be Walter Conkrag, mm -hmm. uh, Dan Rather were highly respected. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were highly professional. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we have now, it's beginning to descend from a place of respect. Okay. So it, when the respect for an entity descends, mm -hmm. its influence does also. Yes. Okay. Now, should education, for instance, start to raise? Because social media is inevitable, become the medium where people go for news. Mm. So should education now include probably a course or start to frame people's minds in order to understand that not everything that you see in social media is true? Or should we go back into the days in which we teach people how to research topics to know what a true topic is so that we can legitimize real news? I think uh, it first starts at the home. Mm -hmm. I mean, with what you're saying, I mean, knowing that what's on social media isn't true. Right. I mean, and that's the same way with watching a movie isn't true mm -hmm. or what you hear some, on a record isn't true. You know, it starts at home. It starts with the family unit, you know, mm -hmm. and teaching the kids the right way to come up. I mean, that's where it starts. And really, that's where it ends for me, you know. Honestly. Okay, definitely. And uh, what, what is the church doing lately to help? Well, I will put it this way. Educate engage empower okay 
So in order for us to go through the issues, topics that we're talking about, there has to be a general education and it could be it doesn't have to be traditional it could be like you said from the home it could be in our little communities the african affairs meeting mm -hmm. it could be there mm -hmm. but then when we educate we have to engage and we have to engage on purpose mm -hmm. to achieve a result because we talk like i said but we have to achieve an outcome and the outcome has to be abc we must outline it if we want to see africans in power engaging with the mm -hmm. people then we have to do that and then of course we are all empowered. Mm -hmm. When you are empowered, if, if one, one person is empowered in, the, in your family, then of course that house is also truly empowered. There is a trickle down of uh, uh, empowerment. Okay. And now uh, from a perspective of an African American, Anita, how can, what topics, uh, excuse me, what topics should we or would, you, would we want to discuss in the African diaspora community? One of the ties that binds, mm -hmm. despite what the background is, mm -hmm. is celebrations and holidays. Mm -hmm. And we, that's one of the differences that we have because yeah. being descendants of slaves, we tend to take on the holidays of those that were the slave masters. Mm -hmm. Yet when African-born immigrants come to the country, they mm -hmm. have different celebrations. Mm -hmm. A lot of us didn't grow up with carnival, what? but DC has that's that just right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carnivals, right. not just one. <laughs> and right. they are grand celebrations. Right. But I wasn't taught the background or the history of that. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that are the ties that can bind yeah. us right. yes. and, and teach us what our similarities are. And I think okay. that that is something that can be brought to the top of the list as to right. issues we can discuss. Okay. Now, what, ab what about education um, of um, both? Africans and uh, Native Americans or, or people of African descent Native of America? I think um, anything that starts from the bottom, mm -hmm. if we start with our schools from mm -hmm. kindergarten up to elementary and coming up, mm -hmm. we may lose a generation, kind of, lose okay. in a quote unquote. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so we have our mindset, we are all stereotype, we are there, we want to fight. But if we start with the schools, I think that it would be a great way okay. to learn, not, not only um, about the um, traditions and cultures, mm -hmm. but also political empowerment. I'm, I was very much into politics. I am into politics. Mm -hmm. I look forward to politics, but I think it should start at an early age. Okay. Now, does, does the, um, African, do the African institutions have in their agenda a sort of... Well, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I'll try to refer myself not as an African institution. I live here, and I, well, I, you, I, I yeah, well, pretty you're much. Part of an you're part of an yeah. institution, and you and you represent the Africans to yeah. the, uh, the 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 African Americans the who right. are here, the mm -hmm. immigrants. Right. Uh, I, I would phrase it that way. But right. uh, I think what we need to do is now, right now, we are in an age that we are controlled by the technology. Mm -hmm. So we're raising kids, as a father myself, we're raising kids who are very much attached to their devices. Mm -hmm. So child obesity, mm -hmm. uh, men low mental development, mm -hmm. like, uh, you, you know, all the negative impacts that come up with, comes up with this kind of you know, obsessive attachment with technology are now we'll see in the fruits of them. Mm -hmm. So we need to start by educating our kids. Yes. If we really want tomorrow to be bright, okay. At least we need to start instilling mm -hmm. the uh, standard that right. we want to see in the future in our kids. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. This has been the African Community Forum. Till next time, be safe. <laughs>